This is an incredible song to dig into on the studio multi-track level. There's a lot going on in the vocal production, and there's a lot less than you think going on with the rest of the production. You'll see what I mean when we get into it. It's kind of mind-blowing. I get to use sessions and tracks like this because I teach people how to sing on this channel. So this content falls under fair use. And if you want help with your own singing and your own vocal production, the best place to start with me is by clicking the link below in the video description and joining my free voice course. The first thing I noticed when I imported these files is that this song was not recorded to a click. And I know that was semi-common for this time period, but it was also semi-common for things to be recorded to a click, and I just assumed that a song like this recorded at this time period would be recorded with a click. But look at this tempo map. Um, that, and now this is sort of an anomaly just from, you know, computers and stuff. But look, this song starts around uh, 1, 125, and then it, it speeds up a little bit here, and then once we get to the bridge and, uh, you know, instrumental sections and stuff like that, we're all the way up to 150. And then it slows down a little bit towards the end. A lot of stuff, especially in recent years, you know, oh, lock to the click, let's plan every tempo change. No. And you can feel that in this song. Uh, if you're familiar with this song at all, you can feel that natural, organic shrink and grow and, and pocket as the, as the tempo does its thing, it serves the arrangement. It serves the energy of the song. So cool. Listen to the drums. No samples here. This is all drummer. Listen to the snare. Sounds like a close mic snare, and it sounds very similar to what you hear in the cymbals. All very organic sounding. Kick. Listening to this, I hear the bleed. I don't think this is sampled. It, it, it could be, and it, it, you could definitely make the argument based on the sound and the consistency, but I think this is just a really consistent, well-played drum kit. Um, and it's been gated or cleaned up, uh, so you don't hear the bleed in between those, those, uh, those kick parts, but you hear the snare bleed, you hear the cymbals. What a fantastic drum performance. Wow, wow, wow. Listening to the bass. Ugh. I've talked about this on other Slipknot songs, but this idea that we have both clarity and dirt at the same time. This is usually achieved by going direct and then running another sound, a parallel sound into an amp. Sometimes it can be the direct that they've tweaked inside the DAW. To me, it sounds like a cleaner amp sound because I hear that air around the amp. Of course, modeling and stuff is so good these days, who knows, but this wasn't re recorded in, in super recent times. So I think this is a cleaner amp and they've taken the direct signal and they've made it crunchier, but who knows? Guitars. <laughs> That's really cool to notice. Notice this transition here. You hear the fizziness at the top. 
you know, almost sounds like a direct sound combined with the the amp sound. Again, similar to what we were just talking about with the bass. Direct guitar gets a bad rap, but they're even using it here, and they're using it in context with amps and layering it in. You know, Nirvana did this too. Lots of guitar players do this. It creates this extra sonic soundscape, something that I think a lot of us miss when we're recording guitars. And that is, it's not just about getting the tone out of the amp or about the amp model. It's about layering different seemingly misfit sounds together to build the overall sound we hear on the album. That's what's so great about listening to these these multitracks or these stems is that we get a sense for what the production does to what we perceive the tone to be. And the same is true with the vocals, as you'll see to an extra degree as we get into this. But this is really pretty basic. Like, listen to this again. You can hear those two different sounds, the direct and the, and the, the amp. It's not happening here. It's happening here. Of course, that that octave sound that's right in the center, pretty cool. Let's go. Uh, let's go over here to the verse. Notice how these are clearly there's a there's a unique performance on the left, a unique performance on the right. They're not perfect. They're they're played twice. They're doubled for that width and that variety. And the one on the left is fizzier sounding, and the one on the right has more mid range. It keeps it wide and big without being too packed, so that you have a place to go when you get to. Mono, octave sounding guitar here, and then... Oh. And we throw those little subtle key thi keys things in. Which really, I wouldn't hear this as keys just listening to the whole mix. Now I can't unhear it, but really cool to hear how these distorted layers go together and act as one unit, act as one big wall of heavy sound. This isn't stuff you notice when you're listening to the whole mix. This is stuff you have to drill down into, into this type of level in order to fully appreciate the artistry behind the production. Ah, oh, super cool to hear those sorts of things in isolation. Added toms, interesting. Yep, yep. Lots of different parts, lots going into that arrangement, but the production is simple. Things fitting together in very strategic and artistic ways that bring you this wonderfully massive, hard-hitting sound. And part of that is making sure that each sound isn't too big in and of itself. That, you know, those drums aren't hugely big, right? They're, they're organic, acoustic sounding drums that don't take up a ton of space. The guitars are layered in such a way that they leave room for the mix to grow and shrink and, and come out and grab you and retreat. If we have this mind that everything needs to be massive, nothing will be massive. But if we create parts that create space and opportunity, then we get 
massiveness. Keep that in mind as we go to the vocals. Go! I like even just hearing that cut right there. Stay bold shots! Inside and outside water and I'm sealed in tight! Bizarre right at home! Claustrophobic! Closing in and I'm catastrophic! Not again! I'm speed across the pain! Okay, we'll get to those effects in just a second. But listen to the call and response between Corey and Corey that's happening here. We have things combined. So this is a vocal stem as opposed to multi-track vocals. So we have to just use our ears to separate this because we can't visually see it. But this is Corey going and recording every other line and then going back in and recording every other line in response to those every other lines. You can hear that. Cool approach. But it creates this sort of longevity and perception of endurance that pretty special. It's, it's a production aspect, and it's kind of tricky because it wouldn't sound this cohesive, doesn't sound this cohesive live. Still sounds good, but there's an extra degree of, of on it. Stay bold shots! Inside and outside water and I'm sealed in tight! Bizarre but right at home! Claustrophobic! Closing in and I'm catastrophic! You can hear him interrupting himself just a little bit. There's these crossfades happening there. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about his tone here uh, in a minute. I've done lots of videos on Corey Taylor's tone, his technique, his screams, how they've changed over the years. Be sure to check out some of those other videos. But listen to these cool effects here and these layers. Back, not again! I'm speeding across the page! And that's a gasoline! I wear you like a stain! Yet I'm the one who's obscene! Catch me up! I'm on your sword and little Liz Rex us! I've got no time to lose! I'm just caught up in all the cattle! Okay. Ugh. He's got the same character that he has at the beginning, where it's this, you know, false chord engaged yell. There's a, not much, there's a little singing. Across the page. And that's a gasoline. I mean, there's, there's singing, but it's, it's this yell singing. This isn't, this isn't just a false chord scream. This is a, a musical yell and his false chords are engaged. But listen to the distorted layer that happens in addition. Across the page. And page, page. This is a very low key down to vocal fry, page, page. And then we have this distortion pedal level distortion over the vocals. The difference that I want to highlight here, though, is approach. Da, da, da. You know, doing that, that musical yell that's happening. And then we've got page. We've got these two different characters drawing this contrast, and they are placed differently with the production. This wouldn't, uh, this kind of talking wouldn't really work if it weren't for being brought out and putting it put in a slightly different place in the mix with the distortion and different EQs and stuff like that going on. You'll get a, a closer look at how to do this stuff later in the video. A word you like a stain! Stain. Yeah, very, very different character, very gooberish. <laughs> but it works behind that aggressive, very open sort of sound. Cattle! Fray the strings, throw the shapes, hold your breath. Listen! I am a world! Oh, we'll get to the chorus here in just a second. Listen to this section again. Fray the strings, throw the shapes, hold your breath. Hold your breath. He's just talking right on the edge of Fry. And what they've done now is they've doubled this sort of sound. Fray the strings, throw the shapes, hold your... One of them is placed right in the center, and then the other one is... Sounds like it's either tripled or he's got three different takes, and we've panned the other ones out this way with just little bits. And notice I'm continuing to go down into Fry. With little bits of variance to make it super wide. But the center image is actually fairly weak. Fray the strings, throw the shapes, hold your breath. Listen! I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Hear that fry guy coming in here in the in the sort of holes. I will remember. So you've got the I, and then you've got the I happening underneath where he's singing the melody. 
I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. We've got that wide distortion that we established in this section. I throw the shapes. But we've got him yelling in that same sound. This is orchestrating vocals. This is arranging and vocal production. It's not just about someone getting up and making a good take in the studio. This is placement. This is this is variations on a theme like you'd hear in classical music. So cool to hear this stuff develop and 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 be implemented in isolation like this. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Before I forget that. I now, listen to this scream here. Before I forget that! If we go, let's listen to what he just sang. Far I forget! Real loud singing, loud enough to, and using a little bit of compression. He's not thinking about compression necessarily. He is just pushing a lot and his false chords are getting engaged. Not the healthiest way to do it, although as he's progressed as a singer, he's gotten healthier and been able to do this in ways that don't trash his voice. But listen, listen to how he gets the contrast between his singing. Far I forget! And his screaming before i forget that it's still sort of singing there's still pitch there before i forget that before i forget that right there's still that primary chord engagement happening it's not just complete false chord abandonment it's it's false chord engaged yelling that's very much like he's singing except for he has a different posture with very gets super you know ha 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 like that and here, before I, for before I forget, we're not taking into account the distortion. We're just talking about the vocal posture. Before I forget, before I forget, and then, before I forget that, before I forget, like that. Now we summon false chord engagement over this yell, this musical yell. Before I forget that, before I forget that, huh? Before. Na, 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 before I forget that! You lengthen and you let yourself vulnerably expose your break. For I forget that! Really lean into it. Oh, with this huh mentality. Before I forget that! You have the, at least the beginnings of how to yell and scream like Corey Taylor. More on that in other videos. I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. I love the call and response nature of this whole song. That's what makes these, these vocals so catchy. And this, this pop sense in the production over heavy music, that's what made this genre, and this was really, I think Slipknot in a lot of ways is where this started, uh, taking pop music ideals and applying it to heavy music makes things really, really interesting and huge and engaging and catchy. Before I forget that! Oh. I'm wrecked across the ditch and settled in the dirt and I wear you like a stitch Yet I'm the one who's hurt Pay attention to your twisted little indiscretions I've got no right to win, I'm just caught up in all the battles Battles! I like that, how you just hear the normal speaking voice at the end of that Battles! It's cool Also notice how stitched together this is, right? We still have that call and response thing going on That I talked about earlier where they've He's kind of interrupting himself, but then we, we put the fry, distorted fry scream, fry talking in there as well. Like a stitch, yet I'm the one who's hurt. Pay attention to your twisted little indiscretions. Lots of different pitches happening, right? We got the da 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 here, we got da 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 down here. We've got the call and response that's happening. There's lots of different texture and and pitch, even though not all of it is sung pitch, that's creating the interest and the fullness in this vocal perform overall vocal performance. Locked in clutch, pushed in place, hold your breath, listen! Notice how 
prominent the breathing is, the inhales are, as we've got this distortion and com extra compression on there. Really cool sounding. Locked in clutch, pushed in place, hold your breath. Listen! I am a world before I am a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Before I forget that, I am a world before I am a man. Nice tagged chorus here. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Before I forget that. Now there's a lot that goes on in the music to build up to this last section. And then we eventually will return to this sort of comfortable place in the tension. Another thing that makes the arrangement of this song so awesome. My end, it justifies my means. All I ever do is to lay my every attempt to evade. The end of the road in my end, it justifies my means. Interesting production choices here. This uh, section. I do is to lay. Every time to evade. The emphasis is really on the, the outer wings of of the, the panning. You've got that, it's very distorted everywhere. It's cleaner in the center, but more distorted out towards the wings. But listen to the transition here. To, ev to evade. The end of the road in my end. It justifies my means. We've got him doubling himself an octave lower. And we've got a clean center vocal that comes in, as opposed to everything being distorted. So we have both the range separating itself out, octave lower, octave higher, or normal octave. And then they complement that by making the, the prominent vocal, the one in the center, clean while maintaining the distorted vocals out here. Lots of distortion and different gain stages being used in these vocals. Really important to note because a lot of times we try to get like one sound for our vocals or, you know, hey, I, I got I to gotta get the signal chain set up for my vocals. This signal chain is all over the place. And it's really way better because of it. Beans, all I ever do is delay my every attempt to evade the end of the road. I am a world before I... I'm a man. I was a creature before I could stand. I will remember before I forget. Before I forget that I am a world before I am a man. I There's a lot of just natural breakup from intensity here. Um, that's one thing we have to realize with Corey Taylor is the natural tone, the natural sound. He's not striving or going for any one particular sound. He does do a great job of manipulating his different characters, right? We've got the, you know the, the, the guy that's in, sort of in the in the gutter. We've got his his mid range singing. We've got this sort of talking. We've got the hoo, hoo, sort of macho scream yell sort of thing going on. But there's not this pursuit of good technique, at least not at this stage in his career. And but it still it just sounds great. It sounds so good. I will remember before I forget Before I forget that I am a world before I am a man I was a creature before I could stand I will remember before I forget Before I forget that What's so interesting about this is that this this uh, you know sort of pedal sound is so simple to make. Oh, it's just really low effort fry oh, with the right amount of distortion and reverb so that it takes up a good place in the mix. And then we've layered it with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just that musical yelling, and then this this end scream is awesome. Yeah. How it goes higher and higher there, but it's it's simple yet arranged in such a way that just sounds so hard hitting, so awesome. Before I forget 